Republic of Liberia, Ministry of Commerce and Industry, program marking the official signing of the World Bank's loan and grant for the Liberia, for the implementation of the Liberia Investment Finance and Trade Project, known as Lift B. The term is April 4, 2022. For our welcome remarks, I have the honor to invite Deputy Commerce Minister for Administration, Honorable Wilfred J.S. Bangura. Honorable Mamani G. Dix, Minister of Commerce and Industry. Honorable Samuel D. Ford Jr., Minister of Finance and Development Planning. Dr. Kiman Ontara, Country Manager, World Bank, the Deputy Governor of the Central Bank of Liberia, Dr. Dukli, other members of the Cabinet, members of SMT, of the Ministry of Commerce and Industry, members of the press, and other day's guests, members of the press, their friends. This is truly a momentous occasion. Judging from the composition of dignitaries of both the government and partners who are gathered here today. That is why I consider the task of welcoming you all to the Ministry of Commerce and Industry and for the purpose of this special ceremony, a great honor and an undiminished privilege. It is needless to say that the pillow under the PAPD assigned to our sector, which falls under the general rubric, economy and jobs, is on the rise. This is not mere words or rhetoric. It is a fact and it is incontrovertible. We must therefore thank the World Bank for its support to the government of Liberia. This feat is a big win for the visionary leadership of Minister Dix. It is a big win for the PAPD and indeed a big win for Liberia. The Liberia Investment Finance and Trade Project will lend enormous support to government's determination to boost private investment facilitate trade and promote access to finance and markets for small businesses as well as enhance digital financial services in the Liberian economy. The LIFT Liberia project is also intended to bridge the gulf between genders and to promote entrepreneurial parity and opportunity to achieve their full potential. This is a huge Undertaken. This project holds in its hands the much desired chance for economic growth and prosperity. Without much ado, it is my distinct honor on behalf of the Honorable Minister of Commerce and Industry, Madame Mawani G. Dix, her entire team and staff of this great ministry and in my own name, to extend to you all a warm welcome to the premises of the Ministry of Commerce and Industry, and as well as to this program. I want to wish you well in all of your deliberations. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Honorable Deputy Minister Bangura. As a matter of tradition, you always have to be welcomed into the home of somebody. This doesn't mean that you are totally a stranger, but this is a matter of tradition at Borogo. So thank you, Honorable Deputy Minister. For overview of the LIT program, we now invite Mr. J. Bebo Brown, Head of Development Finance, CBL.
let me stand on the established protocol and state that I am profoundly delighted to provide a brief overview of the Liberia Investment Finance and Trade Project, the late fee, at this historic signing ceremony. Following several months of technical engagements and high-level policy meetings between staff of the World Bank and the government of Liberia, on February 9, 2022, the Board of Executive Directors of the International Development Association project. This is the first World Bank project in support and the Central Bank of Liberia. So what does the LIFT project seek to achieve? The project aims to improve the investment climate, expand sustainable assets to finance, and increase the efficiency of trade in Liberia. Importantly, the project incorporates features that seek to address the identified gaps between men and women with respect to the participation in economic activities in the country, especially around differential constraints and performance between women-owned and men-owned firms. The project will monitor the extent to which activities are contributing toward closing gender gaps by measuring, among other things, one, the number of single, the national single window NSW users who are women. Two, the number of women-led SMEs that get trained. And three, the number of women-led SMEs that get a loan through this project. So let me take you through the key components of the LIFT project. To support the government of Liberia in facilitating private investment, trade and access to finance, the project will support activities organized on three complementary components. The first is investment climate and trade. The second is SME access to markets and finance. And the third is digital financial services, DFS infrastructures. There will be a fourth component for project management, monetary and evaluation, and contingency emergency response. On each of these main components, there are sub-components that are important to note. The first component, investment, climate, and trade, has an allocation of US dollar 16 million, which constitutes 40% of the overall project budget of $40 million. This component is expected to improve Liberia's investment climate by strengthening institutions that are providing government to business G2B services, covering investment support, business entry, and international trade. There are three sub-components on component one. The first is private investment support, which has an allocation of $5 million. The second is business registration, the one-stop shop, which has an allocation of $3.5 million. And the third is trade, the national single window, which has an allocation of $7.5 million. The second main component of the project, SME access to markets and finance, is intended to improve capabilities and competitiveness of SMEs via targeted technical assistance, linking them to markets and access to finance through a combination of TAs, technical assistance, and a line of credit. So this second component, SME access to market and finance, has a total allocation of 11 million, constituting 27.5% of the overall project budget. 
And the two subcomponents are SME access to markets, which is 4 million, and SME access to finance, which is 7 million. The third key component, digital financial services infrastructure, will support access to digital financial services through a new national payment switch and an enhanced credit registry at the Central Bank of Liberia. This component has an allocation of 9 million, constituting 22.5% of the overall project budget. And the two subcomponents are the National Electronic Payment Switch, which has an allocation of 7.5 million, and the Credit Registry, which has an allocation of 1.5 million. As I intimated earlier, there is a fourth component that deals with project management, monitoring and evaluation, and emergency response. And this fourth component has an allocation of 4 million. Project beneficiaries. The direct beneficiaries of the project will be former or close to former SMEs, individuals using the services provided by the various upgraded government platforms, and financial institutions involved in the project. Within these groups, the project will proactively seek direct representation of women. Indirect beneficiaries include the current and potential workforce of firms due to improvements in the investment climate of the country. As the dominant share of former firms reside in the capital city, the project's geographic focus will be primarily in the urban areas, though some activity in secondary cities is also likely. I should conclude by discussing briefly the institutional and implementation arrangements of the LIFT project. Beginning with the Project Operations Manual, the POM or POM, we should detail how the project will be implemented, including the institutional implementation and procurement arrangements. And I can say that the development of this document is at an advanced stage as the pump will be used as a condition for project effectiveness. There will also be an SME line of credit manual, which again is at an advanced stage that will govern the extension of credit to small, medium enterprises. The second layer is the project implementation unit, the PIU. This should be housed within the Ministry of Commerce and Industry and will provide project implementation support and lead the day-to-day -day management of the project. The PIU will consist of specialists assigned to the key technical and operational areas of the project. The PIU's team should be in place before project effectiveness. And again, I can report that there has been significant work to ensuring that the PIU is fully constituted and established at the Ministry of Commerce. The technical specialists of the PIU will work directly with the technical implementing ministries and agencies, what is termed in the project framework as TIMAS. They will ensure that each TIMA is provided with the technical, financial, and procurement support required to achieve the desired outcomes for the project. The Project Financial Management Unit, the PFMU. This is anchored as a specialized unit in the Ministry of Finance and Development Planning and will be responsible for all financial management functions of the project. Specifically, the PFMU's role is to manage project funds on behalf of the executive agencies, keep financial records according to the World Bank standards, implement internal management control, and ensure regular external audit in collaboration with the audit authority of the country. The Technical Implementing Ministries and Agencies, TMAS, consists of the implementing institutions for the overall project, 
and these are the Central Bank of Liberia, the CBL, the Ministry of Commerce and Industry, MOCI, the Liberia Business Registry, LBRO, Liberia Revenue Authority, LRA, National Investment Commission, the NIC, the Liberia Special Economic Zone Authority, the LSEZA, and the Small Business Administration, SBA, at the Ministry of Commerce. Each team will designate a project focal point who will receive technical support from the relevant technical specialists within the PIE to support the implementation of project activities. Finally, there is a project steering committee, PSC. The PSC will provide high level directional oversight to the project. The PSC will comprise ministers and heads of agencies involved in project implementation or the designated representatives, as well as representatives from the private sector. The PSC will be chaired by the Minister of Commerce and Industry and co-chaired by the Executive Governor of the Central Bank of Liberia, given that the mandate of project activities brought the force on these two institutions. Honorable Ministers, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you for your listening as we look forward to a successful implementation of the LIFT project, which bears huge potential of gingering economic activities in our country. Thank you very much. Thanks to Mr. Brown for providing an overview of the LIFT program. As the program progresses, atom by atom, we now come to the point of remarks. I have the honor to invite Dr. Kuima Utara, Country Manager of World Bank, for a remark. Minister of Finance and Development Planning, Honorable Samuel D. Toya Jr. The Minister of Commerce and Industry, Honorable Mawain Diggs. The Deputy Executive Governor of the Central Bank of Liberia, Honorable Dr. Dukuli. The Deputy Minister of Finance, Mr. Augustus Flormon. The Deputy Minister of Finance responsible for fiscal affairs, Dr. Samora the Deputy Minister of Commerce, Honorable Sangula. Development partners present here, colleagues from the World Bank, members of the Fourth Estate, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the World Bank family, it is a great honor for me to participate in the signing of the financing agreement for the Liberia Investment, Finance, and Trade Project in the amount of $40 million, of which $20 million is an IDA grant and $20 million is a concessional IDA credit. The financing was approved by our board on February the 9th, 2022. The signing of this financing agreement today marks yet another important milestone in the development partnership between the World Bank and Liberia. This is the first time the World Bank is providing such a significant amount of financing to support programs for improving the investment climate for the private sector. This is in recognition of the significant progress that the government has made in stabilizing the macroeconomy over the past three years. This resulted in Liberia being removed from the World Bank's list of countries categorized as fragile and conflict-affected situations after an improvement in the country's overall rating under the World Bank's country policy and institutional assessment. 
In spite of the progress made, we do recognize that an improvement in macroeconomic indicators alone does not mean anything if it does not translate into tangible benefits for the people of Liberia by improving their living standards. In this context, the most sustainable pathway to improving the people's living standards is by creating more and better jobs. It is through more and better jobs that people can earn the incomes they need to buy whatever they need to improve their welfare. In turn, more and better jobs are best provided by the private sector. The role of the government, therefore, is to create a conducive investment climate for the private sector, whether domestic or foreign, large or small. In turn, establishing a conducive investment climate requires focusing on three key areas. First, it entails establishing a stable macroeconomic environment where inflation is under control and the exchange rate is stable. The private sector does not like a volatile environment. And we've just said that significant progress has been made on this front. Second, it also entails investing in critical infrastructure such as roads and energy because without good infrastructure it becomes too expensive to produce anything or to access markets. This is usually a long-term undertaking as it entails a significant amount of resources. The World Bank and other development partners are supporting the government in improving roads and electricity infrastructure. Third, creating a conducive climate for the private sector also entails improving government systems and processes that make it easier for investors to start and operate a business, including facilitating their access to finance and markets. This, ladies and gentlemen, is where the project we are signing today finds its premise. Through the LIFT project, the government will create a one-stop shop for business registration and licensing and automate the process so that it becomes easy to start a business in Liberia. Through the LIFT project, the, pro the government will simplify and automate the process of exporting and importing goods by creating a national single window for trade. Through the LIFT project, the government will establish a new electronic payment switch system that will connect and improve the efficiency of various elements of the financial system, including commercial banks, microfinance banks, mobile money agents, etc. Through the LIFT project, the government will establish a modern credit reference system so that uh, banks can easily check who has a good credit history to pay back loans. Through the LIFT project, the government will provide a line of credit for small and medium enterprises, as well as build their capacity to access markets. Over the next five years, the project will directly support over 750 small and medium enterprises by providing a customized suite of services, including coaching, training, market linkages, investment facilitation, and finance. Through the LIFT project, the government will strengthen the capacity of the National Investment Commission and the Interministerial Concession Commission Committee to attract large investors and negotiate investment agreements in order to get the best deals for Liberia. Through the LIFT project, the government will establish the Liberia Special Economic Zone Authority that will guide the activities of establishing special economic zones and industrial parks. As you can see, ladies and gentlemen, the LIFT project will be a game changer for Liberia. It sends a loud and clear message that Liberia is open for business and that it will be the investor's destination of choice. Once again, by facilitating private sector investment, the project will contribute towards the creation of more and better jobs. That is why we believe 
that this is a project that every librarian should have an interest in. As a matter of fact, a robust and dynamic private sector does not only create more and better jobs, but through the payment of taxes, it also is the main source of revenues that the government needs to improve public services. Ladies and gentlemen, this project is a result of many months of hard work and collaboration between the World Bank and various government ministries, agencies, and commissions, notably the Minister of Commerce and Industry, who are our hosts today, the Minister of Finance and Economic and Development Planning, the Central Bank of Liberia, the Liberia Revenue Authority, the National Investment Commission, just to mention a few. I would like to thank the Minister of Commerce and Industry, Honorable Dix, and the Executive Director of the Central Bank of Liberia for their leadership and commitment to the project as leading implementing agencies. Standing representation that we get the encouragement and inspiration to do more for this country. Honorable Augustus Plomo for the ever uh, commitment and for being the competent link between the Ministry of Finance and all the line ministries and agencies throughout the project cycle, from preparation to implementation. I also would like to thank all the technical staff in the government and the World Bank for their hard work and perseverance in doing the heavy lifting that has made it possible for us to reach this stage. I would also like to thank USID for the collaboration on the National Single Window for Trade. Ladies and gentlemen, like I always say during such ceremonies, the executive branch of government has done its part in mobilizing these substantial amounts of resources that will transform the lives of Liberians. It is now up to the legislature to ratify the financing agreement as soon as possible so that implementation can begin and the people of Liberia can start, benefit, can start benefiting from the project. We look forward to the successful implementation of the LIFT project and you can count on the World Bank's continued support. I thank you very much for your attention. Thanks, Dr. Montara. And I like that statement. This is going to be a game changer for Liberia. That is very good. We look forward to that. The MC always carries a program sheet that you may not have, but this is not from the negative perspective. We continue with remarks. This time I have the pleasure to invite a representative from the Central Bank of Liberia for a remark. Good morning. Uh, the, the Minister of Finance, Ladiro, Honorable Samuel Tue, the Minister of Commerce, Honorable mm -hmm. Mawini Dix, the Deputy Minister of Finance, Honorable Augusto Flomo, uh, the World Bank representative to Liberia, Kwamina, Dr. Kwamina. On behalf of the Executive Governor of the Central Bank of Liberia, J. L. Lushan Stalu, who would have been here, but due to other pressing national engagement, he could not attend this occasion. But he has asked me to convey his special greetings to all of you, and specifically thank thank the World Bank for the this lift project. From the Central Bank of Liberia perspective, uh, we we are delighted for this project because it has, it has implication of uh, supporting our economy, given that uh, access to finance is one of the major constraints this economy is confronted with in respect to doing business, the ease of doing business. And then when we look at our financial indicators of the central bank, we see that uh, credit, private credit to GDP is less than 
which is low compared to other countries' standard. Our financial inclusion index in Liberia is around 36%, and our target is to take it to 50% between now to 2024. And uh, we think the lift project is in the right direction, as uh, has been indicated earlier, that it's a game changer for Liberia and the Central Bank of Liberia. It's fully in support of the project. That's why we part of the technical committee to have this project ongoing. Uh, we are implementing several regulations in support of uh, deepening access to finance in Liberia. We have approved the digital financial regulation that is intended to support small-scale credit in the economy. We have approved our remittance policy as well that is also intended to support financial assets. We are also in the process of uh, we've approved our macrofinance policy. So we believe that this project significantly will support the economy and to a greater extent help to improve or help to uh, make our RSCFs operating in the rural community to be more efficient. Currently we have two RSCFs and they are operating at a soft optimal level because of uh, the difficulty of getting cash to those areas. So we believe that this lead project to some extent Given all of the implications it has on our economy with respect to our credit reference operation, uh, it will help to automate our support the automation of our credit reference. Currently, we have no performing loan economy around 21%. So, with this improvement of our of our credit, with the support of the lead project to improve our credit reference operation, we believe it will significantly uh, improve the operation of the CBO with respect to reducing uh, the non-performing loan that currently stays around 21%. So we, I don't want to say much yet, the Central Bank, I you know, uh, is, is delighted that this will support SMEs and to a greater extent reduce poverty, especially poverty among small-scale farmers in our economy and support financial dependence. So let me start and say thank you so much. Uh, J. Alosha Talu is fully in support of this and uh, we convey his me this message to him when he comes back. So thank you. And the Central Bank, I you know, we continue to work to ensure that this project becomes successful. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. We'd also like to entertain remarks from the representative from the Liberia Revenue Authority. present, the country manager of the World Bank, of the World Bank. ladies and gentlemen. Um, I like the special commendation from the country manager, from the country manager extolling the Air Force of our Honorable Minister of Finance and the Minister of Commerce for the great efforts in bringing this lift library project to fruition. All of the subcomponents that were mentioned by Jay culminate into what we from the end of the library revenue authority expect as a stimulating effect that will allow our country to move towards billions. Trade facilitation is key for us and we are happy to take the lead on the single window project. We've had a lot of engagement with the Minister of Commerce, with USAID, and this morning, in fact, the World Bank is conducting um, a workshop on single window at the, at the Palm Hotel that has been attended by staffers of the Library of the Authority and uh, the Minister of Commerce and Industry, including the private sector. So let me join the others to so thank you. We look forward uh, to working with uh, the technical, the project implementation unit at the implementation level. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, I have the pleasure to invite on the podium for remark the Honorable Minister of Commerce and Industry, Republic of Liberia, Honorable Mawani G.D.
Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Honorable Samuel D. Tway, Minister of Finance, Dr. Quima Nathara, Country Rep Manager of World Bank, Dr. Dukley, Deputy Governor of the CBL, Deputy Ministers of Finance, Minister Flomo and Minister Wolokoli, Deputy Ministers of Commerce, Minister Bangura, Minister Goba, Minister Wallow, and Minister Nimbo, all Assistant Ministers, our dynamic head of the Liberia Revenue of Liberia Business Registry, representatives from the LRA, the World Bank team, special guests, members of the press, ladies and gentlemen. Today is not just a great day for the government and people of Liberia, but for the Ministry of Commerce and Industry, who for the first time will be implementing a project such as the Liberia Investment Finance and Trade Project. The list P. I want to thank His Excellency Dr. George Manewia for the leadership and direction in ensuring we arrived at this point, and my cabinet colleagues for all of the support rendered. I also want to thank Dr. Quima Nthera, World Bank Country Manager, and his dynamic team for the cooperation and support, and we look forward to further enhancing our partnership as we take a step forward to the next stages of this project. When we took over the Ministry of Commerce and Industry, we stressed and made a commitment to ensuring that the President's vision as laid out in the PAPD for an improved... So today is a manifestation that we have gone beyond just that commitment, not just that commitment, to taking substantial steps to making the lives of our people better following the massive disruption to trade and the economy as a result of the COVID-19. The Lift P and other projects implemented by the Ministry of Commerce and Industry, as well as by other agencies of the Ministry's commitment to the full implementation of this project. And I look forward to the development of similar projects to address other programs the Ministry of Commerce and Industry is planning to roll out. There's not too much to be said here today, because I think it's clear the path that we're on as a ministry and as a government. And it is a collaborative effort and Liberians will benefit. So, your commerce, all of the implementing agents and supported here in Liberia. I thank you for your time, I thank you for your attention, and we're just truly excited for the next steps. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister. Country Manager, Dr. Prima Nthera, Deputy Governor of the Central Bank of Liberia, Deputy Ministers of Ministry of Finance and Development Planning, Commissioner for Customs at the Liberia Revenue Authority, other officials of government, members of the press, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Before proceeding with my remarks, uh, I would like to say that yesterday was a momentous day in the history of our country. One of the towering giants who labored to get Liberia where we are today was laid to rest. In his honor, I would ask all of us to please stand and give him a few moments of silence. Thank you very much. You have your seat. Um, you know, today it's a great day that we are here to sign LIFT. And I like the acronym because LIFT is Lifting Liberia. 
the World Bank guys and the Americans are very good at acronyms. <laughs> <laughs> the best acronyms in the world come from the USAID, the Americans, and the World Bank. I can say that. You know, fact is that LIFT is the first World Bank project. That fact, that it is the first World Bank project to address in a structured way the business investment climate in Liberia says a lot about the World Bank. What it says is that the World Bank has listened to the government. You know, I recall a meeting held with the president by the World Bank country manager and the regional manager in the president's office. Then he was at the foreign ministry. And the president was basically clear that Kwema, Pierre, Bangucini. So whether it's in agriculture, it's in investment, it's in trade, whatever the bank is doing, we want to move faster. In response to that meeting, we have seen exemplary, extraordinary movements by the bank in a whole host of areas, including today. And so let's thank the president for pushing the bank, for pushing Quema and Pierre, and for realizing many of the things that we're seeing through the bank today. Thank you, Mr. President, for the leadership. I say thanks to the senior vice president for West, Western Central Africa. We're working together. I look forward to meeting him soon at the spring meeting in Washington, D.C., where again, this project and other developments will be discussed in a very serious way. Today we're here talking about the economy. And as Krima said, government can set the enabling environment, but ultimately government cannot provide the jobs that are needed in the economy. 76, 70,000 people work for the government. We're actually reducing that number gradually. Probably might be 69,000 now. But 70,000 people work for the government. It used to be around 74, 75,000. There are 5 million citizens in the country, and 76,000 people work for the government. You see the ratio? It means most of the people would not be able to work for the government. It's about those small businesses, those mom and pop shops, enabling them to have a toehold in the process of economic transformation, in the process of making sense of what it is to be a Liberian, a Liberian business. This is the beginning we're trying to chart in this project. Liberian businesses have a litany of problems. And it is incumbent upon the government through relevant institutions such as the Ministry of Commerce, the LRA, the CBL, to be able to foreshadow those challenges and solve them. The Ministry of Finance, you know, forget yourself sometimes. When we did the constraints analysis for MCC in 2018, I think somewhere there, one of the major constraints that came out of that analysis is access to finance. The analysis said that infrastructure was the binding constraint. When I talked about the progress we're making in roads, the work we're doing, significant work is happening in electricity and roads. So let's, let's underscore that point. Significant work is happening. In a matter of time, we will see the fruition of all of that work. So the country is addressing its infrastructure constraints as, as you know, uh, developed by the constraints analysis. The major constraints that we also found was that access to finance is a problem in the country. The first, if you ask any Liberian business, the first thing they would say is access to finance. And they would say access to finance for two important reasons. But I think the most important reason they would say, they get loans sometimes. It's difficult to access the finance. But I think the bigger problem for them is that when you access the finance, it's as if you did not even access the finance. So access becomes non-access. So a, bank, a, a firm walks into a bank, say you're from the agriculture sector, you get a loan, 20000 like dollars As soon as you step out of the bank, you start to repay before you even start brushing the farms. 
So technically, that access is a non-access. That's a major challenge for businesses in Liberia. How do we fix that? How do we, what is the path? And for me, the firms in the agriculture sector have to be prioritized, Squima, because this is where we want to turn Liberia into a food security zone where most of the things we eat here are grown right in the country. But the people who grow those things will require finance. And we have to find a way to de-risk lending to the agriculture sector, to partner through a guarantee scheme with the banking sector and the financial institution so that when these vulnerable businesses take loan, they are protected for a period of time. Now, I'm not claiming that this project is going to work toward that. But this project sets the base for the vision of the president and of the government for being able to work with the bank so that we can offer better tenure in our loan structure to, to, to different industries in the country, especially the agriculture sector. It is unfair for a business to be giving a two-year loan and to be, ex I mean, you know. So there is what I call a repayment mismatch. The economic literature say maturity mismatch. I say it's a repayment mismatch in the sense that the bank or the firms are repaying in a way that is not logically tied to the business logic of their proposals. And so when we get to the other big problem that was discussed by the central bank governor, deputy governor here, the NPLs, maybe we see one of the reasons why we have high NPLs. So is do high NPLs reflect the fact that businesses are unwilling to pay? Or do they reflect more fundamental, deeper aspects of the credit environment such that there are repayment mismatches? The guy is supposed to make money from the loan to repay. If the, best, if the loan is not helping him or her to make money, how can they repay? That has been lost in the debate, in the NPL debate. Yes, it is true. NPLs are relatively high. Many of the things that's happened in the financial sector we have not brought to the public domain. I have not commented on the level of risk that that sector has faced in the last 10 years. So since we assume office, I have not really talked about, the government has not put our information about what has happened in the financial sector, the risks that the financial sector faced. We didn't talk about that because we know this is a sensitive information bank. But there have been significant challenges and the government has worked to weather that storm. This approach, this structured project, structured financing to the investment of the business climate is a way, is another way for the government and its partner, the World Bank, to continue to work on those problems. So that, that has been the, that is the nexus of, of, of access to finance and high non-performing loans. And I believe that through this project and through other approaches that are coming, we can work to reduce that threshold, the ratio of non-performing loans in the country, so that uh, banks can continue to lend money. Quite recently, the judicial conference, uh, the, uh, the judiciary held a judicial conference. The chief justice led a conference. You media people were there. The idea was that many businesses are complaining about the challenges that they face in the judiciary because this is a big part. In fact. I was talking to a bank about the share of credit to the private sector, which since March 2017 has been declining. Credit to the private sector from the banking financial institution have declined from March 2017 uh, all the way to, I think, March 2020. March 2020, we see a turnaround. The turnaround is still happening. So credit is going up marginally. We hope that, that we can sustain that trend. When you look at the graph, it runs from down and it reaches March, and it goes up. So that's a good news. The question is that, how, what can we do to sustain that? This bank president told me, Mr. Minister, if you want my bank to put more money out in the economy, you solve the challenge with enforcing collateral. So the bank gets a collateral from a firm. The firm defaults. The bank has no way to enforce on the collateral. That's a, a disincentive. If you ask me as president of a major bank in the country, I will tell you that is the most significant reason why I don't want to put money in the economy. So that to mean then, I 
told the Chief Justice that, and uh, one of those one of the reasons why we called the conference. And the lawyers, you know, you look at the civil law procedure on collateral and all of the issue about collateral, uh, the, the credit reference system, and all of that. But how do we enforce collateral in a fair and judicial way such that the interest of depositors' money is protected? The reason why a bank gave money is all of us put our money into the bank and they gave it to one person. If there is a default, we lose all of our money. We stand the risk of losing. So the monies that the bank gave are depositors' money. Mom and, and, and you know, Jones, the Lapus of the world who put their money into the bank, the bank turned that money around. So we have to create an environment in which businesses are able to pay. We're not blaming businesses. I know I've been criticized sometimes for saying NPLs are high, but I think we have to go deeper beneath the surface, all right? And say, there's a reason why businesses are not paying. As a government, let's look at the problem holistically through a project like this and through other mechanisms to solve, to solve the problem. So the judiciary has an important role to play. We set up a commercial court. You're aware of that. You see the commercial court. There is a reason why that commercial court was built to expedite cases. But I think the court itself right now is overwhelmed. And we have to come back to the drawing board to lift and through other projects to see how we can allow how we can we can reform some of the judicial processes, enhance the nexus between investment business and the judiciary. That has to be there. Quima talked about one-stop shop and the business process. That's another source of complaint from businesses. The length of time it takes to do things, the multiplicity of entities that are doing the same thing, the duplication of efforts, all that one, it's a, it's a constraint as well. Um, the government is moving in a direction already prior to this project to address a lot of these things. There are some misconceptions that have to be clarified here about the business process. First misconception is tariff. Liberia has one of the lowest tariffs in sub-Saharan Africa. The weighted average tariff is one of the lowest. We are 9 to 10 percent. You have countries like Rwanda, I think 12, 13 percent. Kenya, many countries have that. Maybe Nigeria beat us by 6 percent. That's fine. But we are among one of the lowest. So it is not true that the rate of tariff is high at the free port of Monrovia. What is true is that maybe because of the administrative bottlenecks, there are other costs that, are, that, that businesses are incurring and they, mean, they, they take that to mean the tariff. The Ministry of Commerce, the MPA, the LRA are all working to streamline all of these systems. And these systems. And this project is going to accelerate and enhance that process. So there's already a backdrop of reform going up, which will complement what this project, in fact, this project may accelerate some of that. But let's talk about specifically the pre-port of Monrovia. We have a concession with APM Terminal. One of the constraints was that we gave APM Terminal a concession agreement that did not require them to bring gantry crane. You know, the, they say gantry crane. Those cranes that low, offload the ship, the machine takes the container and passes it on and puts it on the shore. We signed a, I don't know, almost a $100 million investment Right, the company made, and there was no gantry crane. The president was not happy about that because businesses began complaining when he took office. So he charged the Minister of Justice, the National Port Authority, the Minister of Commerce, and myself to look into this problem. We led a delegation to buy, and we sat with them and said, look, this concession has problems. We don't want to end the concession, but we need to find a way to solve. You can't have a, 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 a multi-million dollar investment and don't have gantry crane. I'm proud to report that APM terminal, as pushed by the President of the Republic of Liberia, has moved to procure two gantry cranes. <laughs> They're coming. That will radically change some of the process, the dimension of the processing they have report. We're in discussion right now. Actually, today we're meeting APM terminal. And let's say APM terminal has a new leadership that is a good leadership. They looked at the concession, they've heard the cries, and they're trying to sit with the government, the Minister of Commerce, the MPA, to find a way to practically resolve many of the issues that are at the port. As a matter of fact, in a digital sense, in sense of keep, uh, developing a one-stop shop, they are really moving ahead so that working with all the government entities to move that process. So you can clearly see multiple moving parts 
are converging on this one centerpiece of business process, access to finance, and the whole logic of the investment in business coming. This is why this project could not have been approved at a more optimal time. So I'm very happy today to join my colleagues in signing this because this is one project whose impact will be felt. In terms of impact being felt, we know that monitoring and evaluation will be key for them. This is where we want to spend a lot of our emphasis in implementation. And we sign the project. The project has deliverables. It has targets to meet. We have to stay consistent in delivering on those targets. And so the monitoring, the project manager unit, the monitoring units have a lot of work to do. So that it is very clear, because this is an intangible thing. One of the difficulties about intangibles is that people don't feel their impact immediately. They are even, they don't, they don't know what's going on. So we have to make deliberate effort to force them to feel the impact. That means the project has to work. So people will be asking questions. Since the project is for the middle project, let's see what impact we're making in access to finance. Let's see what impact we're making in business processes. What is the project delivery? We have to align the challenges in the sector with the deliverables of the project and ensure that we meet our targets. So I'm very happy today that we are here and digital financial services, you know, the whole digitization front, the CBL is in the process of moving to a national switch. We've made significant progress in digitization that I think we take credit for. I've asked, I said, all of the things that have happened in the digital space, I don't think we have a report that succinctly summarizes them to say, where is our digital frontier relative to four or eight years ago? We're making progress, but I don't think we start to see, okay, this is where we are. But I think when we do that report, you will clearly see that the progress we have made in the digital space are mammoth. Now, if you add onto that progress, this project, what the CBL is doing with National Switch, it means we may soon experience a digital revolution. So everything is moving in the right direction. And as Quimon said, and this is something that we've talked about, we've achieved macro stability. That's great. The idea now is to what, we, what macro stability in and of itself cannot create jobs, cannot put food on the table. It is projects like these, and it is projects in the agricultural sector that, when they perform optimally, can they help the private sector, you know, uh, grow revenue, grow as a share of GDP, so that Liberians who work for those people can be employed. I think this is where we are headed. You know, I look forward to, to joining you, Quima, at the, at the spring meeting, where we talk about many of these things. At this spring, we're leading a large government delegation, the Minister of Commerce is there, and, and, hope, and I think also recently I heard that you were interested in uh, the Minister of Mines may join that, so we talk about a number of the electricity issues that we face. We have big challenges in our sector, uh, especially relative to the CLSG lines, you know, the cost of all of that, we're having this conversation. So we, we will turn the spring meeting here um, into a workhouse between the World Bank, the IMF, and the government, but also the, the American government. Uh, we'll lead a delegation, uh, the Millennium Challenge Corporation, also the Treasury, U.S. Treasury Department, where we discuss challenges and opportunities for transformation and the United States Department as well. So the spring meeting is going to be a technical meeting where we talk about the progress we're making and communicate the challenges and how together with our partners, whether they're the World Bank, the IMF, or the U.S. government, we can overcome those challenges. Thank you very much. We said a big thank you to Honorable Minister Cohen. Ladies and gentlemen, after the speeches, we now proceed to the aspect that has to do with the signing ceremony, which in my opinion for the cement, all that we have said in the speeches. Thank you. So now the Minister of Commerce is about to sign with for the project that we
this time a big thank you to uh, the World Bank family and to also say a big thank you to all of the, the heavyweight champions of the government and we're looking forward to a very successful implementation of this great lived Liberia project. I want to thank members of the Fulbright State for coming and we are hoping and we'll be listening tell this story to the rest of the world. There are good things happening in the country. And we can say with a fact that the government is, is on its way to delivering the much needed dividends to the Liberian people. Please, tell the good story. Thank you very much for your attention and thanks a lot for coming. Thank you. Thank you we ask our colleagues from the media, so please remain where you are.